Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are, welcome to our session of the Asia Clean Energy Forum. This session is quite different. We have been working together to find out how can we promote more about ADB projects, ADB staff, what they're doing. And I have two other co-hosts, Emily and Samia, I'll ask them to introduce. Hello everyone, I'm Samia. I'm an investment specialist. I work for private sector department of Asian Development Bank. And I'm talking to you from Manila. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Nyongso. I'm an energy specialist working in a Pacific department in ADB. And we are very happy to see you here today. And I'm Sohel Hasni. I'm also in Manila. I'm just enjoying the clean air. But on a serious note, what COVID has done and going to do in the longer term, we have to think and work quite differently. Now that we have learned how to work from home, we have to see how our clients have managed those transitions. One first step is to get ourselves used to this digital platform. And this session is going to do that. And in this session, we are going to focus on three things. Firstly, innovation on renewable energy in ADB project, gender on ADB project, and then climate change. What have we been doing? And we are going to hear from across all our departments. Yes, we will uh, first hear from um, the Lofa Gazanfa that uh, how the gender issues uh, addressed in Afghanistan. And also we will, we will hear one of our hosts from Samia, from a uh, private sector that how Bangladesh uh, is implementing, uh, having a more, more females in, in solar projects. And then we will hear the HR department, what are their challenges recruiting uh, females in the energy sector especially. And we have a one uh, department, uh, Central West Energy Division, um, who has a successfully uh, having a, a lot of the female staffs in their department in energy sector, and we will hear their success story. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's it's kind of difficult to have women in the energy sector, so you know that's going to be interesting to talk about. Um, but then it's also innovation that we want to talk about. So we have four different presentations on how we're innovating in our ADP projects. We're gonna have a CEO coming in, Emily Morris from Emergy, and she's gonna talk about a micro hydropower startup. And then we have six projects that are gonna be presented uh, from our very own um, Director of Energy in South Asia from ADB. And there are six clean energy projects that we're gonna learn about from him. And then we have Shazia Khan, uh, American-born Pakistani. She's going to be presenting. She's the executive director of Eco Energy Finance, and she's going to be presenting what she's been doing on innovation. And then we have a project, a Cambodia solar project, which uh, we are doing financing. This is an innovative financing that we are doing in our Southeast Asia department. And we're going to have Pradeep Tarakan presenting that one. And then what about climate change? So how right? Yes, yes. Of course, before we go into climate change, one other thing I want to also highlight that this whole session, we, and thanks to you too, we have representations, very powerful young uh, CEOs, women CEOs. I'm really looking forward to listen to that. You want to highlight uh, uh, one person that you mentioned. Uh, we are going to hear from a, high-profile CEO uh, from Afghanistan, Nilufar Ghazanfar, Samia? Actually, yeah, she's a client of mine. We're doing a project in Afghanistan where she is one of the only powerful women from Afghanistan representing the whole country. And she's like a trailblazer. And you'll never guess how old she is. She is probably younger than most people in boardrooms. Yes, but I don't think she will have the crown in our presentation today, in terms of how young, I have two 
teenagers, they are going to give us a message on climate change. How they are thinking about climate change beyond COVID because it's a bigger challenge. Their combined age, I think, is still below 30. So uh, they are going to talk about that. And then once we get messages from future, if you like, we are also going to discuss how our Pacific department looking at climate change issues. So a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Now, uh, Emily, you were saying earlier that as a, when you, uh, was a, uh, you were a new staff in the bank, you had a lot of challenges understanding the bank work. You want to expand a bit more? Yes, I think uh, for a newcomer, it was quite difficult to understand uh, what are the procedures and processes that ADB is going through on from the beginning of the project start until the approval. So I would be very um, interested in here Sohail's explanation to simplified version of uh, uh, giving an overview of the lifetime of uh, ADB project. Ah, you are giving all the secrets away. Uh, yes, uh, what I plan to do, uh, three of us, we represent just the tip of the iceberg. Because there are a lot more people that are involved in doing any project. So I would like to take you through a journey, one of my projects. Who are the people that are involved? So let's start on that session. Thank you. See you back. Thank you. at the end of our movie. Although we may have seen only a few people on the stage, exactly that's what happened with ADB projects. There are only a few names that appear in the official documents and maybe when you go to the field, you will see someone like me as the mission leader, someone like Eileen as the analyst, and someone like Ia as the assistant in the project. But there are a lot more, so many more people that are involved. I want to take you through those stages and meet those people today. So let's come. We are talking about a project, current project. This is the Turkmenistan Our Sector Development Project. So the total loan amount was about 500 million dollars. Let me draw a very big circle. So we start on a project what, with what we call a idea. So then we go and check with the client what we call a become this mission. After that, once we know what the client wants, we come back and prepare some internal document, what we call the at a concept paper meeting. And at that meeting, we get a lot of feedback from our other clients. Once the concept paper is done, what we do, we do something called a Fact finding mission and go. We go in the field, find more about the, about the project. Once we done the fact finding, we come back and internally there is a meeting called management review meeting. It's quite famous, called the MRM. Once we have the MRM, basically we are authorized to go and do a loan negotiation with the client. So that means at that time we are dictating the terms of the loan, discussing the terms. Once the loan negotiation happened, we come back and present to our board and the loan approval happens at a meeting. 
that is approved by our president, once the loan approval happens, we have to have something, a formal arrangement, which is the loan signing. In parallel to all of those, we also start doing, working with the client of procurement activities. Once the procurement happens, goods are purchased, and of course, we want to disperse money. The contractor gets paid, everybody is, the project will happen. So these are the different journey, if you like, of the project we take. So if we, we start with a recognition mission, we do concept paper, we do fact finding, we do MRM, we do loan negotiation, loan approval, loan signing, procurement, and disbursement. All these stages involve many, many people. And today we are going to take you through all these stages. Interestingly enough, these two stages, what we call collectively project implementation and the rest of it is called project processing. So please come and join me in this journey, find out how a project at ADB goes from an idea to an infrastructure on the ground. Helmut Sandman, Sardar Chariev, Olga and I started the mission. We went to Ashkabad, the famous white city, to understand its power system, understand the potential for export from this country, this gas-rich country, and what may be the need that we can finance. We worked with the client very closely. We had a large team behind us. We had Shani Campbell, Nurlan, we had Atsu Sakai, and Vas Banchikov. The food was so amazing in the city. Even we found out the sturgeon fish in the Caspian Sea. The, our finance guru, Diep, Helmut, and I have been in the project from the beginning. That mission ended with a very good relationship with the client. We came back to the city of Ashkabat, a city of lights, with the promise of a future project and an opportunity to work with a new client. And that's how the mission end. I am Ia Webb, and I am a member of the Turkman project team. A bumpy ride. This perfectly describes how we started the project. We had very high level information that we will be doing a regional project, which is exactly what the client wanted. We had field visits to Balkanabad, Turkmenabad, and Tashigo substations. Members of the team met with government counterparts during one of the many technical discussions. And in between those meetings, we always look forward to having our fill of Turkmen food, which is all meat. We even took a vegetarian to a steakhouse for dinner. Our generous host meticulously prepares for us a table filled with every imaginable local cuisine. Carpet shopping is a must when in Turkmenistan, because of its premium quality and beautiful patterns. We went to Dashagos' main office, which is in the mayor's office, and after collecting all available information, spent long hours putting critical documents together. Our technical consultant checking the pulse of the huge transformer, and another steak dinner to cap a long day. We had meetings scheduled at every day of the mission. Smiling Turkmen women in their traditional wear this is how our mission ended, with happy faces. We always start a kickoff meeting with the minister and senior government officials. Loan negotiations started with a bit of frustration, but with some clarifications and patience, we were moving forward. This is how Ashgabat looks like during our daily travel to the different government offices. With less than a million population in Ashgabat, you won't really see anybody or even cars in the streets the whole day. It was indeed a white city offering a clear and open canvas for future projects in Turkmenistan. Despite the dark clouds hovering over us, we felt optimistic. That's our reward after a long day, giving us more energy and smile. That's Mr. Hasni.
That's me, Eileen Aguilar, Project Analyst, Dave Pam, the Financial Specialist. Thanks to Aisha Qadir, our legal counsel, who also provided support from HQ. At the end, we were all happy, feeling accomplished and fulfilled. We came to Turkmenistan on loan signing at a brand new airport in a blue, bright day. At the back of the Karek Energy Ministerial Conference, where Turkmenistan was host in 2018, a loan agreement for $500 million was signed between the Asian Development Bank and the government of Turkmenistan. And this is how a project processing stage of a project ends and then the implementation begins. <music>tap into new energy resources within existing waterways and convert that energy into clean, reliable electric power. We build small, modular, flexible turbines that can be scaled at high quantities for growth in power generation that can serve those around it. They're placed directly into waterways, often no need for anchoring or modification of the existing infrastructure whatsoever. Our vision is that the future of energy is distributed between solar, wind, and distributed hydropower now being available. Um, customers should be able to get the energy that they need local to where they live. And so Emergy provides a continuous and reliable electricity solution. We would love to leave a legacy of refining and disrupting how power is generated and delivered this century in a way that can be low impact to the environment, reliable around the clock as water flows, and um, cost effective for en enabling power generation for everyone. to South Asia Energy Division. ADB South Asia consists of six countries, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal and Sri Lanka. It is home to one-fifth of the world population and also it is one of the most densely populated regions in the world. All these countries are strongly committed to increasing energy access and clean energy development. ADB South Asia Energy Program also emphasizes on increasing energy access and clean energy development. Not only we support these countries in investments, but also we support them for improved sector governance and operational performance and also move towards a cleaner energy sector in the future. The energy sector is going through a rapid transition these days. In this regard, innovation and cross-sectoral interventions are critical. We always support these countries for innovative technical designs and solutions, business models and financing in the energy sector. Also in terms of cross-sectoral interventions, we would support these countries' energy sector involving education, health, irrigation, transport and all the other sectors. My colleagues now take you through our story in South Asia. Bangladesh's robust economic growth over the last decade has been accompanied by rapid increases in energy consumption as well as rising CO2 emissions. Energy efficiency and conservation are central to achieving energy security as well as meeting national climate change commitments. We at South Asia Energy Division joined forces with our government counterparts to provide much needed financial assistance for industrial energy efficiency investment projects. ADB's credit line targets businesses wishing to replace old, obsolete and inefficient plant and equipment with more modern and efficient solutions. 
The ADV assistance would in this manner contribute towards energy efficiency along the production process chain in various sectors, with special emphasis on textiles, garments, cement, and other large energy consuming sectors. Bangladesh government has a target to generate 10% of power from renewable energy. Land acquisition is one of the major hurdles in developing utility-scale solar PV power plants in the country. To help address the land scarcity issues, ADB introduced floating solar technology into Bangladesh through its existing technical assistance to help the government assess the country's floating solar potential and identify the candidate sites for public and private investments. Although Bangladesh has been achieving near universal access to electricity, challenge remains in rural areas supplying reliable and quality electricity. I used to live in Bangladesh and I know how difficult it is living without 24-7 electricity supply. In the next decade, ADB will support to strengthen the rural distribution network to bring the same comfort that we are experiencing. In Bhutan, almost 100% of electricity is generated from clean energy. ADB has been supporting the development of hydropower and financed the Dagachu hydropower plant, which was completed in 2015 with 126 megawatt of capacity to export the electricity to India. Now we are also constructing Nikachu hydropower plant to be completed in 2021 with 118 megawatt. Bhutan's dependency on hydropower could make the country vulnerable to long-term climate change impacts and can have negative impacts on river flows. This can impose a significant risk to existing and future hydropower developments. Diversifying the electricity generation can help to reduce such risks. ADB is now working together with Bhutan to develop its first utility-scale solar PV and wind power plant in the country. India is the third largest energy consumer in the world after PRC and USA and is ADB's largest energy sector borrower with an annual commitment of $1 billion to $1.5 billion per year and an ongoing portfolio of $5 billion. Traditionally, ADB has been supporting the transmission sector in India, where IDB has financed the transmission interconnectivity between renewable rich regions such as Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan with the load centers through the Green Corridor program. ADB has also supported renewable energy development by private sector through a credit line implemented by IREDA as well as directly financed by our private sector operations department. Since of late, ADB has been focusing on the distribution sector to restore the financial viability and sustainability. This includes ADB investment in states like Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Meghalaya and Madhya Pradesh, where ADB has financed feeder separation, aerial bundle conductor conversion, high voltage distribution, as well as a smart metering. The energy mix in India is still largely based on fossil fuels, about 75%, and it is dominated by coal. The Government of India has recognized the need to achieve more sustainable economic growth while reducing carbon emissions. In 2008, the Government launched the National Action Plan on Climate Change. In 2015, the Government pledged to reduce the energy intensity of economy by 33-35% to 35 from 2005 levels by 2030. This is part of their nationally determined contribution to the UNFCCC and Government is on track to achieve this. From ADB side, we are focusing on few areas where we can add value and make a difference. On the investment side, we have ongoing projects to promote solar PV, both ground-mounted and rooftop, evacuate renewable energy, scale up energy efficiency, especially on the demand side, and smart metering. We have also mobilized to promote electric vehicles and charging infrastructure and energy storage. Developing challenges in India are huge, so are the opportunities. Though Maldives is the first country in South Asia to achieve 100% Electrification, this has come with a cost due to its highly dependent on fossil fuels and also highly dispersed nature of the islands. Asian Development Bank, with our co financing partners, is helping to transform these diesel based mini grids into renewable hybrid systems through preparing of the islands for sustainable energy development project or POIS project. POIS project is one of the largest 
and it's just like the intervention in Maldives covering 160 islands across 20 atolls. The POIS projects have already accomplished installation of solar PV, battery, and energy efficient generation systems together with EMS and distribution grid upgrades in over 70 islands. This project is on track and is able to meet the same outputs. Nepal has come out of chronic electricity shortages, especially during dry winter months. ADB is supporting the government of Nepal, Nepal Electricity Authority and Alternative Energy Promotion Center. ADB is supporting development of storage type hydropower and facilitating private sector and commercial financing, including ADB's PSOD for the runoff river type hydro. On transmission and distribution, both on grid and off grid, we are supporting transmission lines to evacuate clean hydropower and re enforcing and modernizing distribution system. This includes promotion of smart meters, underground of distribution network, use of efficient STLS conductors, distribution control centers, mini grid for remote areas are just a few examples. We are supporting government and newly established Electricity Regulatory Commission on sector reforms and NEA in its efforts in improving financial sustainability, adopting new technologies, financial management, gender, social and environment safeguards. Current energy sector portfolio in Nepal is about 630 million. We strive to support Nepal in achieving efficient and reliable electricity supply for domestic and being the net electricity exporter. Sri Lanka has achieved over 99% electrification rate in 2016, up from mere 29% in 1990. However, the increasing share of fossil fuels in power generation mix makes electricity costly and pose serious threat to Sri Lanka's energy security and environment. In line with Sri Lanka's ambitious renewable energy targets, ADB has been supporting this transition through various projects such as the 100 megawatt wind power generation project to develop large scale wind farms, rooftop solar generation project to provide credit line to consumers to install rooftop solar systems provide support in developing small and medium hydropower projects, renewable microgrids, and waste-to-energy projects. ADB also supports projects and innovative solutions to improve energy efficiency, power quality, and reliability of transmission and distribution networks in the country. This will further enhance the penetration of renewable energy in Sri Lanka. When introducing the clean energy into our energy system, we are also facing new challenges like intermittency and the time is matched between the energy supply and the demand. In this regard, ADB also supports the technologies to address these problems such as energy storage, energy conversion, and smart grid. Clean energy can store it in batteries or convert into other forms of energies like heat, cold, gravity, or hydrogen. Demand-side management is another effective tool engaging distributed customer energy facilities. We also help power utilities to enhance their power networks, improve transmission capacities, controllability, and flexibility to build a reliable, resilient, and smart grid. Advanced biofuel is made of renewable resources. It will help reduce crop burning and air pollution in India. Agricultural waste can additional income to rural female farmers. It is not conventional energy project. We will take a multi-sector approach to promote sustainable energy. We are knowledge bank as well as police advisor in energy sector. Our project experience and knowledge are shared through publishing. We have more knowledge products to come. Clean energy projects are designed to deliver environmental benefits, but if not well designed and implemented, can also result in adverse impacts on the environment. In SAEN projects, we have had to consider how fish migration could be blocked by hydropower dams, how birds might collide with wind turbines and transmission lines, and how the ecological productivity of lakes might be affected by floating solar. Environmental assessment helps our borrowers to identify how such adverse impacts are best managed with SAEN supervision and monitoring to ensure that they implement the agreed mitigation measures. ADB, as a development bank, we feel the need to embrace people who have been left behind of development 
and make our projects inclusive for the poor and women. Energy connection and reliable supply can change people's lives and enable women to work better. Energy Division South Asia Department has made continuous efforts and provided renewable energy systems to schools and villages, scholarship for female students, and energy-based livelihood skills training to women. Beyond supporting gender equality and social inclusion in operations, SAEN is also contributing to knowledge products. We started developing a corporate gender survey for the Bengaluru Energy Efficient Power Distribution Project and are planning to open the survey to a broader audience as an online assessment. SAEN is also contributing to a front office initiative to ensure that gender equality and social inclusion are first and foremost in resilient energy planning and design. We hope this approach can be replicated and rescaled for projects of different scope. Financial management is critical to the success of our ADP energy projects. Financial sustainability of state-owned enterprises and long-term financial viability of our projects will maximize our development impact for years to come. So it's imperative for us at South Asia Energy to continue up our policy talks with the government in order to build a case for a cost-reflective tariff, which will not only decrease the dependence on subsidies, but will also give us robust and healthy cash flows. Encourage clean energy financing, such as through pilot project, then scale up later, and credit line. We have successfully funded micro credit line to more than 5,100 rural households to install biogas plant in Bhutan to reduce the usage of firewood, LPG, and kerosene. We also assisted Bhutan to pilot a wind power plant and opted solar as an alternative energy supply to meet growing demand, particularly in the winter dry season. To tackle climate change and build disaster resilience, ADB has strengthened our commitment in various ways. We South Asian Energy Division also put a lot of effort into reducing our portfolio level greenhouse gas emissions. In 2019, South Asia Energy Division committed over $625 million in climate finance, which account for about 41% of the total climate financing in the energy sector. Ladies and gentlemen, just now you saw that our contributions in the South Asia energy sector are significant. We are always there for these countries to achieve their ambitions towards a cleaner and a sustainable energy sector in the future. Thank you. Hello, my name is Shazia Khan. I'm the CEO and co-founder of EcoEnergy. As the daughter of immigrants to the US, I visited Pakistan regularly throughout my childhood, and I witnessed poverty so shocking that it left an indelible imprint on me. From an international development perspective, poverty is the result of a complex set of factors. Access to healthcare, education, and economic opportunities have one underlying thing in common, energy. Solving the energy problem means that a significant portion of the global population will be able to contribute to the reservoir of human knowledge instead of focusing on meeting their basic needs. Without off-grid, 100% of Pakistan can never be electrified. For the past decade, I've been focused on one thing, building a company in a difficult market with steady revenue and sustainable year-over-year -year growth. We started small by electrifying 10,000 households and will soon pass over 200,000 households as well as thousands of large-scale commercial and industrial projects. But that's not what keeps me going. I'm interested in creating something transformative, something that will be my legacy to my children and to the world. A new distributed power company from the bottom up, a way to make clean energy the affordable choice for millions of people across Asia. Being a female founder comes with a unique set of challenges, but it's also endowed me with a unique perspective. Emotional intelligence, compassion, resourcefulness, and long-term thinking about your legacy to your children are not the exclusive purview of female leaders, but these traits are disproportionately shared by most. They've enabled me to build a company that values employees and customers along with shareholders. It means creating a place to work that provides opportunities for growth for its employees and continually figures out way to create true value for its customers. We're not too proud to invest in relationships with stakeholders or to collaborate with competitors. Female leadership's different because we're not here to win, we are here to transform. Hello, 
Did you know that electricity demand growth in the ASEAN is higher than any other region in the world? And most of this electricity comes from fossil fuels. There are a lot of people who still believe that renewables are expensive and are intermittent and therefore unreliable. How do we change people's perspectives about renewables? Come join me and my colleagues at the Asia Clean Energy Forum to find out more. In 2019, Cambodia, a relatively small country in the ASEAN, set the record for the lowest procurement price for solar in the region. How did they do it? And what was ADB's role? Hi, my name is Pradeep Tarakan, and I'm with the Sovereign Energy Operations of ADB and focus on the Greater Mekong sub-region. I am joined by my colleague Farhan Villaplanas from ADB's Office of Public-Private Partnerships, and we will tell you how we did it. But first, a bit of history. In recent years, ASEAN has shown the highest rate of growth in electricity demand in the world, and the bulk of this electricity, nearly 80% of it, comes from fossil fuels, coal, gas, and diesel. As for the remaining 20%, the bulk of it comes from large hydropower dams. So only about 5% of the total demand is met by wind, solar, biomass, and other environmentally friendly resources. Now let's take a look at the cost of renewables in the region. Here are the trends in procurement prices for solar PV and onshore wind in the ASEAN compared with China and India. Similar to the rest of the world, prices have been coming down in the ASEAN, but in 2018, ASEAN was still paying a relatively high price for renewables compared to similar places in Asia. And this has hampered the development of renewables in the region. So in early 2018, we decided we were going to bring together various parts of ADB to provide end-to-end -end support to enable the scale-up of renewables. Our prior experience had shown that there is a lack of well-structured and efficiently procured projects. So ADB's Office of PPPs was to take the lead on providing transaction advisory services to structure these projects. Second, in many countries, there was a need to bolster the credit of the public sector power utilities. and This was to be done through policy dialogue and providing public sector financing wherever required. And finally, there clearly was a need for competitively priced funds for both the public infrastructure and for the private sector investments. And wherever appropriate, we put that together along with concessional finance, including grants from climate finance sources. And once we, once, once we designed this 1ADB approach, we decided to test it out in Cambodia. Cambodia in 2017 was getting most of its power from coal and large hydropower. They had just commissioned their first 10 megawatt solar plant and so had taken their first tentative steps in that direction. But the country's power development plan at that time was aiming to add more coal and more hydropower capacity. The government was not very comfortable scaling up renewables. And finally, the country's sovereign rating was sub-investment grade, which meant that it was going to be really challenging to attract large international players to the market. And it is through international competition that we can actually lower procurement prices. So we proposed the concept of a solar park to the government. The park had two components, the solar park facility, where the land, the substation, and the transmission line to connect to the grid was to be set up. And this was to be constructed and financed by EDC, the utility, using an ADB sovereign loan. And the second component was the solar PV generation plants. These were to be developed, financed, and operated by the private sector. And the private sector entity would sell the power to EDC under a power purchase agreement, which would be procured through a competitive process. And so we said we're going to support the government to tender out the first 60 megawatt capacity with additional capacities to be tendered out in subsequent phases. And this is how the bankable contractual structure and risk allocation was developed. A fairly typical structure with a project company having a PPA with EDC and implementation agreement with the government, with equity sponsors and a financing agreement with the lenders and finally an EPC contract and O&M contract. The risk of providing the grid connectivity, land and other ancillary services is borne by EDC and therefore reducing the execution risk allocated to the developer 
or the plant. And overall, risks were allocated appropriately to parties that were best suited to manage their risk, which then ensured bankability of the project. And this is how the, the auction process unfolded. We had over 100 firms purchase the bid documents. It was unprecedented interest. We had 26 bids received, 18 of which were pre-qualified and found to be technically compliant. And when the financial bids were open, the lowest tariff that was obtained was 4.415 cents per kilowatt hour, which was a record in the ASEAN. And then we had a second stage, the best or final offer, but the lowest three bidders were then asked to come up with a second round of competitive tariffs. And the final tariff that was awarded was 3.877 cents per kilowatt hour. The results drove home three points. Well-structured and well-managed tenders do attract a lot of competition, and this competition along with the de-risking drives down the cost. And having a multilateral development bank such as ADB in the mix strengthens the overall process. So where do we go from here? Encouraged by the Cambodia example, we're taking this approach regional. ADB has recently launched a, a, a program called the ASEAN Scaling Up Renewables and Storage Initiative, or ASURE for short. Under this program, ADB will work with ASEAN countries to deploy renewables on a large scale by supporting project development and facilitating private sector participation. This is end-to-end -end support and tailored to the client's needs and circumstances. We have received a lot of inquiries from the region and here is a list of current opportunities that we are pursuing in the medium term. We are looking at the second phase of the National Solar Park in Cambodia. We have also been appointed as advisors on a waste to energy project in, for the Phnom Penh area. We are working on a 300 megawatt floating solar auction in Vietnam. We are in early discussions on for solar auctions in Indonesia and Timor-Leste. We are also talking to the government of Myanmar for possible support for a large wind auction. And in Thailand, we have completed a pre-FS for offshore wind and are in discussions with the government on next steps. I'd like to thank you for your time. And we have included a video on the project here on the last slide. And you're welcome to view it at your convenience. Thank you once again and happy to take your questions. I am Nilofar Gazanfar and I lead the energy division of Gazanfar Group, one of Afghanistan's largest private corporations and pioneers in the oil and gas, finance and energy sectors in the country. As the first female executive in the company, the first woman from the family in the company and the first Afghan woman in the energy sector in Afghanistan, my goal is to see more of my female colleagues in this line of work. Having taken the lead on the first fully privately financed gas project in the country with the financing of ADB and other financial institutions, I'm looking forward to working with ADB in the renewable energy sector, not only to bring reliable and green energy to Afghanistan, but also to empower and involve Afghan women in the sector. Afghanistan's future is not only dependent on a self-reliant economy, it is also reliant on a balanced society. Bringing power to the country will allow it to be independent and encourage local production of goods, stable operation and sustainability of our critical institutions, including schools, universities, hospitals and factories. While we bring this power to Afghanistan, my aim as an Afghan businesswoman is to involve more of our women in every walk of life, from the educated ones in the capital, to the ones in the urban areas, training them in maintenance and operations, finance and business development, and eventually for a future of women entrepreneurs pioneering not only in the energy sector, but the Afghan economy. Hello everyone, welcome to my session, where we will walk through a Bangladesh private sector solar project. My name is Samia Tarek. I'm an investment specialist. I work in ADB's private sector operations department, also known as PSOD. The team in PSOD covers all private sector investments across Asia. 
Here's a photo of my division within PSOD, which specifically focuses on infrastructure finance in 16 countries across Central, South, and West Asia. As you can see, we are a small team of high-functioning individuals. We work hard, but we also have fun. Our main goal in PSOD is poverty reduction through inclusive, sustainable, and socially responsible economic growth led specifically by the private sector. So every project we work on has a strong development impact, is commercially viable, and maintains the highest standards of corporate governance and sustainable business practices. I chose to present a solar project in Bangladesh because it is unique in many ways. It is the first private sector solar plant in Bangladesh to be financed by any multilateral institution. And that also means that this is the first solar project in Bangladesh to be financed by ADB's private sector operations. So on this, let's hear from my division's head, Shantanu Chakraborty, Director of South Asia, Central Asia and West Asia. Hi there, greetings to all from Post Rain's Lush Green Manila. My name is Sean Chakraborty and I am ADB's Director for Infrastructure for Private Sector for West, South and Central Asia. We are all extremely delighted to support the 35 megawatt Spectra Solar Project in Bangladesh, one of the first such projects being supported by development banks and institutions. It's a landmark project and firmly establishes the commercial viability of private sector investment in grid-connected solar power sector in Bangladesh. Bangladesh, as we all know, is in significant need for renewable sources of energy. More importantly though, we are proud to be also adding value to the project by incorporating very meaningful gender elements into the project to further gender mainstreaming. We are proud of our partners, Spectra, for collaborating with us on this very important ADB agenda. I wish the project all success. Thank you. Cheers to Spectra Solar. Secondly, this is the first PSOD transaction in Bangladesh to receive a technical assistance grant and to receive blended concessional financing from a Canada fund that is administered by ADB. And it is also unique because it incorporates very specific and meaningful design features to empower women and ensure a gender inclusive workplace. And this is all possible because of the Canada fund that ADB administers. So let's hear from the fund manager of Canada, Stephen Fleming on this project. My name is Stephen Fleming, and I help to manage $2 billion of co-financing funds, including the Canadian Climate Fund for the Private Sector in Asia, Fund 1 and Fund 2. It's exciting to support path-breaking projects that advance policy goals for Canada, including climate change mitigation and gender equality. With Spectra, we were able to provide a project preparation TA grant and a concessional long-term project loan. With the supportive project sponsor, we developed a gender action plan that promotes job creation for women, institutes HR policies that support workplace gender equality, provides training to reduce gender-based violence, and supports community outreach on education and health, including scholarships and public sanitation facilities. Receiving an effective gender mainstreaming rating, which is a first for a private sector solar project, is a great confirmation that we're having the intended impact with these funds and it was a pleasure to have helped with the development of this project. Thank you. So this is a landmark project, but why did ADB choose to finance this project? As you heard from our South Asia colleagues, solar in Bangladesh is challenging. The land in Bangladesh is mostly flat and a lot of it is used for agriculture. The government of Bangladesh in its Vision 2021 set a target to achieve 10% renewable energy, but right now it's only 3%. My team has been evaluating hundreds of projects over the last three, four years before we finally identified Spectra. So when I talk about this project, I'm passionate because I'm personally invested. It all started two and a half years ago when I got a message on LinkedIn from one of my contacts and we saw the proposal and that we saw that the land was successfully purchased for this project. So I discussed it with my managers and me and a colleague, both of us female by the way, went to Bangladesh, saw the project site, and well, the rest is history. We kept our eyes and ears open and it turned out to be a more meaningful outcome than I could have imagined when I started working on this project. This project is my baby. We knew this project would be successful because Spectra was a Bangladeshi company 
They knew the area where the project was being built. They sought advice from re reliable partners. And most importantly, they were willing to work with ADB as a partner and follow our standards and our procedures. Let's hear from Green Delta Finance, the financial advisor on this transaction. Thank you for advising the client to work with ADB. Hi, this is Sora Olsen from Investment Banking Department of Green Delta Capital Limited, Bangladesh. I'm heading the Corporate Investment Banking Unit. Being an advisor to the transaction for Spectra Solar Power, we can say one simple thing that is ADB's financing in this project will help to create inclusive growth business model, which will lead to a greater future for the society and the business. Feeling proud to work in Green Delta Capital, which also values gender equality and happy to see companies like Spectra take on gender initiatives with the help of ADB, which will support Bangladeshi women. Genuinely, I too am proud of Spectra Solar Park Limited because they volunteered to implement detailed action plans that made this project achieve one of the highest gender categories in ADB. This is so rare in a standard power project. Let's also hear from my client, the project director of the company itself, Mr. Kamrul Huda. Hi, I am Kamrul Huda, working as the project director for Spectra Solar Park project here in Bangladesh. I am with this project since 2018 and working very closely with ADB. Our engagement with ADB has added higher value to our project in aspects of digital engineering and design, environment and social compliance, gender action plan, project construction, and so on. This really is a fabulous experience for all of us. I thank ADB for all their support. Thank you, everybody, and stay safe. Thank you. Well, there you have it. We have one success story. So what next? The key takeaway is that Bangladesh is an attractive investment destination for power. The Oftaker Bangladesh Power Development Board has one of the best track records in the region. There have been no defaults in their payment history since the beginning of power projects in 1997. The government of Bangladesh is committed to infrastructure development, especially in power. And rightly so, because the energy sector supports the country's economic growth. When I was growing up in Bangladesh 20 years ago, there were brownouts almost every night. When I financed my first power project in Bangladesh in 2012, access to electricity was approximately 50%. And now in 2020, access to electricity is up to 90%. The lesson for other regions in Asia is to follow the Bangladesh model in power. As for solar, although land is a scarce resource, we can do a lot more in solar. This is only the beginning. And in the long run, wind, Floating and rooftop solar are some of the options that Bangladesh can explore in the future. ADB will be helping the government with feasibility studies to find long-term sustainable solutions in power. And us in the private sector, we will finance them. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you for joining. Please post your questions on the screen and we will address as many of them as we can at the end of the session. Thank you. Boys, brush your teeth and don't be late to school. Oh, okay. Hi, my name is Hyun Park and I'm Senior HR Specialist at Asian Development Bank. Please join us. I started working at ADB about eight and a half years ago. I was a mom with two young kids, one at age two, the other at eight months at the time. My family moved from Washington DC to Manila, a city that I knew hardly anything about. For the last eight plus years, I had an amazing career and experience at ADB. I've been part of uh, ADB's Human Resources Department, improving work culture and environment where people feel more motivated and enabled to achieve the mission of the organization. While I was delivering work program, challenging work and growing, I've been also able to enjoy my time with the family and kids. I found that ADB has a culture that supports for diversity and women, especially working moms. If you are looking for meaningful purpose and impact in your work while also having a fulfilling personal life, ADB is the place to work. My name is Hyogen Park 
and I'm a senior HR specialist at Asian Development Bank. Hi, my name is Pierre Dyens and I am a senior HR business partner. I joined ADB five years ago and I've been enjoying my time so far. ADB has offered me the possibility to work for a purpose, to contribute to its mission, achieving a prosperous, inclusive, resilient and sustainable Asia and the Pacific. At ADB, we have unique opportunities to work and collaborate on projects with colleagues from various cultural and professional backgrounds such as lawyers, urban experts, health, gender and education specialists. Because of our diversity, we are challenged with different ways of working, different mindsets and different leadership styles. At the same time, we learn a lot and enrich our personal and professional experience. If you have a passion for development, a background in designing and implementing projects in the clean energy sector, an interest to conduct policy dialogue and collaborate with public and private partners. If you have good problem and interpersonal skills and the ability to lead a team, I invite you to join the Asia Clean Energy Forum and learn more about us. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Ashok Bhargav. I hope all of you are having a very good experience with the new format of the Asia Clean Energy Forum. As director, I am leading ADB's energy team in its Central and West Asia region. It's a region that includes 10 countries and it extends from Afghanistan and Pakistan on one hand all the way to Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan. It also includes five Central Asian countries Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. This vast and diverse region lies on the old Silk Road, and it's a mysterious region still to many of us, and it's a region which is rich in culture and history. Now, given this vast region, obviously there are diverse energy challenges. But one energy challenge which is common to the whole region what we are going to talk about today is lack of gender diversity in the sector. Now globally, energy sector is one of the least diverse sectors, with women making only just over 20% of the workforce. In this region, the numbers are even less. It's also a challenge which we share in ADB's energy workforce, especially among international staff. Now, the energy transition is a complex agenda that requires innovative solutions and business models. Women are normally uh, drivers of innovative and inclusive solutions. And their larger participation now in the energy workforce will improve the outcome of this energy transition. So to address this issue, we try to approach it through a two-fold approach. On the one hand, with me, with the support of my management, made all out efforts to increase the gender diversity in the energy team of ADP. As a result, the number of women international staff has gone up from two to six. And uh, momentarily, you will hear from, uh, from many of the staff on the exciting projects and leadership positions we are taking in all the work we are doing in the, in the sector. On the other hand, we as a team all committed to mainstream gender in all of our operations. And we made a commitment that none of the ADB interventions in the region will be without any gender. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a complex change agenda. But we have made a promise that with the support of our developing member countries, we will make a sustainable change in this area. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to ASAP 2020. I'm Yeonji Seo, 
a young professional working in the Central and West Asia Energy Division of ADB. Working in the energy sector of ADB is indeed a valuable experience, and I think it's kind of privileged to work with excellent colleagues sharing vision and faith. While we are working for our developing member countries, we want to build energy infrastructure, both soft and hard, that could bring better life to the people in Asia. Particularly, we have concentrated our efforts to ensure that those benefits could reach women who remain marginalized or discriminated in many places. We are trying not just to enhance the living conditions of people right now, but also to sustain those benefits for the next generations, for example, through providing clean energy solutions, mitigating climate change. For those who are interested in joining ADB through the YP program, I can assure that it will be an incredible opportunity. My colleagues have extensive experiences in the energy sector with different backgrounds and expertise. They give me opportunities to widen the horizon of my thought and enrich my knowledge. As a professional working in the energy sector, I can tell you confidently one thing. This is the place where I have met more female colleagues than elsewhere. Thank you and I hope you enjoy the rest of the ASEF week. Hello, this is Sarin from ADB Central and West Asia Department. I'm a relatively new staff at ADB, but I already had plenty of opportunities to shape and develop gender-related initiatives. So let me take you on my journey of proposing the first Women in Energy program for the Central and West Asia region. Um, the initiative was born as part of my first big task at ADB, which was developing a 10-year energy strategy for the Central and West Asia region. Developing a strategy means imagining the future and thinking big about the future. So when, if not at such a moment, can we allow ourselves uh, to articulate a vision involving more than just innovative ideas for clean and efficient energy solutions? What is at least as much um, of a priority is to look at the human capital uh, that we might not be using in an inclusive or gender balanced way right now in the energy sector. Developing the energy strategy allowed me to travel extensively to the region where I spent uh, many weeks on the ground. And although I connected to so many people uh, during this trip, I realized uh, there were two things that were missing for me in most of these meetings. Firstly, the young people with whom I had very much wished to discuss my proposals and to connect to more. And secondly, for most of the time, I was the only woman in the room. And we're talking here about a region stretching all the way from Georgia to China. This personal experience and uh, exposure uh, to such a homogenous setup uh, certainly gave it another push to go big on uh, energy uh, sector gender balance in the strategy. The strategy is meanwhile published and I'm very excited to be leading the implementation of the strategy and I'm extremely proud that all energy ministers of the region will be backing us up on this. They recently signed a declaration in which besides energy market reforms and scaling up of green energy investments and developing the private sector. They also committed to gender equity in 2030 for the first time. This is a very big milestone for Central Asia, creating big opportunities. Please join ADB in being an opportunity maker because women who get opportunities will give opportunities to more women and will make the energy sector more productive, more inclusive and more colorful. Hello, my name is Catherine Santiago and I'm the Senior Portfolio Management Specialist of the Central West Energy Division at the Asian Development Bank. As we continue to support the electrification and energy security in these beautiful countries, we ensure sustainability in terms of environmental protection, 
economic inclusion and social adaptation, and also provide allied support services for capacity building and knowledge enrichment. We do a lot of preparatory work here. Been running. The COVID-19 malady has not stopped us from doing all these work. In fact, now more than ever, with the able assistance of our partners, our hands are full, and our resources are able to channel to keep all these projects in steady progress and on track in spite of lockdowns and quarantines. With the physical and mental challenges that work from home brings, coupled with my obligation as a wife and mother to four beautiful girls, I am focused and determined not only to deliver, but to deliver these projects right. If you wish to know more about our exciting work and how you can actively assist us in achieving our objectives, either with being a contractor or a consultant, let us talk and let us be partners. Mabuhay from the Philippines. Marod Favis, Project Analyst at ADB's Energy Division for Central and West Asia, based at the ADB headquarters in Manila. Working from home now, my colleagues and I are more committed to improving quality of life by meeting the energy needs of our developing member countries, especially during this pandemic. I've been working behind the scenes for 10 years, supporting various teams on ADB's energy projects in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Tajikistan, and Uzbekistan, in project preparation and administration. ADB values every team member. My fellow project analysts and operations assistants at the headquarters and resident missions are helping build power plants, transmission and distribution lines, and solar panels to power millions of households. Energy access for all is critical now more than ever, and we continue to work from wherever we are. Are you also working behind the scenes? Let's talk at the Asia Clean Energy Forum. I'd love to hear how you're doing, and maybe you can exchange ideas on how we can better support our frontliners in the field. Talk to me. Hello, this is Nami Gurgenitsa, Energy Specialist from Central West Asia Department, Asian Development Bank. I think there's no equity without the empowerment of women, and there is no empowerment without economic empowerment of women. Women labor at home, whether it's inside the house or in the field, is probably the toughest job ever. Therefore, I strongly believe that more focus should be given uh, into the program, which offer uh, economic empowerment for the women uh, by providing the opportunities for the career development, for education, for entrepreneurship. Um, Without that, women cannot benefit uh, from the equity, neither in their family nor in the society. As a woman in energy myself, uh, first of all, I believe that uh, energy is the driving force of economy globally and locally. And uh, because of that, it can provide a wide variety of very interesting jobs, which are also very rewarding. So I want more women to, uh, to enjoy this benefit. I want the global society to benefit more from uh, these women, this kind of women, and I want um, more women to enjoy the opportunity to work in the energy sector. I dream about the society where both women and men have the uh, choices, and they are, they are free to choose. Um, I want my son to enjoy uh, living in this kind of society, uh, and to enjoy the benefit of the wholeness of the society. That's what I dream about. Hi there, my name is Wu Yan Li. I'm a senior energy specialist at the Pacific Department of ADB. First of all, thank you for giving me this opportunity to introduce both Pacific Energy Sectors and ADB's Pacific Energy Team, we would like to introduce who we are and what we have been doing, especially one of our flagship project, so-called Tonga Renewable Energy Project. For those who might not be familiar with our regions, let us introduce the Pacific region. All together, we have 14 members countries, 12 out of 14 member countries are the members of the small island development states. Therefore, pretty much all Pacific members countries face with the similar challenges in their energy sectors. They are very vulnerable to natural disasters and the potential effect of climate change. 
for instance, the sea level rise in frequent tropical cyclone. Secondly, they are highly relies on imported fossil fuel for their power generation. The average range between 50% nearly 90%. Therefore, their consumer electricity prices are very high. The average range between at the lower end about 25 US cents per kilowatt hours and nearly $1 US cents per kilowatt hour. Third challenge is limited electric access in their outer islands, mainly due to their remote locations and small scales. The lastly, the lack of capacity. It is the common challenge in many of our developing countries, but the situations in the Pacific are more extremes and critical because they are small populations. As you can see from this slide, ADB is very active. This slide shows the ongoing and potential project pipeline in the Pacific energy sectors. We have at least one energy project in all 14 member countries. We are brave enough to say that we are the leading and the largest financial institution in the Pacific energy sectors. As an example of ADV loans in the pipeline, we, are, we finance uh, over 850 million US dollars. In early 2010, pretty much all Pacific nations announced their own renewable energy targets like the 50% renewables by 2020 and 100% renewables by 2030. Megawatt scales renewable energy systems and battery energy storage system for main island in Pacific nations. For instance, the Cook Islands, Kiribati, Nauru, and Tonga. It helped them transform from imported diesel-based power generation to locally available clean and free renewable-based power generation. It also helped them reduce their consumer tariff. In the outer islands, I briefly explained them they're struggling with the lower electricity access in those outer islands. In order to provide sustainable electricity supply throughout the year, even during cloudy days, we provide the renewable-based small-scale hybrid system with existing or new diesel genset for those outer islands. Third solution we have provided is collaborative effort together with other development partners, is development finance and climate finance. Thanks to the government of Australia, New Zealand, Japan, from the multilateral side is European commissions and the Green Climate Fund. Through this collaborative effort, we have been able to provide various renewable energy systems and battery energy storage systems, and also hybrid system, re renewable based hybrid systems in many of our uh, Pacific nations. Most importantly, we have been able to attract increasing amounts of private sector investments on renewable in the Pacific. Uh, women's participation. Since 2015, we have started uh, training the female staff in the power sectors. As you can see from one of these pictures on the slides, we are trying to increase the female workforce in the Pacific energy sectors. Through one single Tonga Renewable Energy Project, we provide the multi-solutions to serve uh, several different the needs of our clients and resolve the several different challenges. Through one single uh, project umbrella and to single the Pacific nation, a uh, single power utility, we, from a public sector side of ADB, we provide a public sector funding and climate finance to create the enabling environment for private sector investment on renewable and through the public sector 
uh, private sector development initiative, regional technical assistance, we provide a commercial and technical advisory service for the selections and negotiation of the uh, selection of the IPP and negotiation of the PPA. And through our public sector, uh, private sector window, we are going to provide this non-sovereign uh, private loan and then regional guarantee product to the private investors. So this is a good example of the 180 approach we are going to uh, we are trying to achieve in then across the Pacific. We are trying to replicate this model uh, across the, the Pacific energy sectors. Now it's basically this model has been being replicated in uh, Nauru and Samoa and also hopefully in the Fiji in the future. Now at this stage, I would like to invite uh, my old friends and clients, uh, the CEO, CEO of Tonga Power Limited. He is going to make a very short remark on the ADBs, the the energy sector or operations in Tonga. And Seti, is you have the floor. Malo Lelein, greetings from Tonga. It is my pleasure to provide a few words relating to the energy for the Pacific. There has always been a close connection between the Asian Development Bank and Tonga in the energy sector dating back to the early 90s. Over the last six years, the ongoing support and investment through the Asian Development Bank in a more resilient infrastructure and access to renewable energy have laid a firm foundation in the principles of reconstruction through the concept of Build Back Better. And this could not be more vital in Tonga's context, being the third ranked highest disaster risk country worldwide. As a small island developing state with limited natural resources, vulnerable to climate change and extreme natural disasters, the energy sector remains a critical essential service to Tonga's progress in pursuing its sustainable development goals and enabling a higher quality of life for all. I am most grateful and humbled in commending the dedication and commitment of ADB's Pacific Department Energy Division in collaborating and building a close working relationship with the various stakeholders involved here in the Kingdom. Without those intrinsic ties, the projects that have come into fruition would not have been more better shaped to adapt to the changing landscape of energy-related projects combining grant funding, capacity building, and private sector investment. Tonga Power Limited is committed to the implementation of Tonga's energy development goals through genuine relationships with our development partners and local stakeholders. Further partnerships remain particularly important in areas of innovation, finance, technical support and capacity building. In order to be better prepared for the ensuing changes in the midst of such unprecedented times, the Tonga Renewable Energy Project with the Network Upgrade Projects are integral to overcome current difficulties and rebound quickly by building back better while at the same time continue to advance Tonga's energy transition into renewable energy dependence while achieving more inclusive and sustainable development growth. Thank you, Seti. Um, as a concluding remark, my takeaway message, and I would like to ask the three questions to all the viewers and audience of this presentation and the sessions. Are you specialized in and passionate about the small scale renewable and BSS and even electrical, electrical vehicle project? Would you like to propose the new innovative solutions other than these technologies for a small island country in the Pacific? You may have some brilliant idea and uh, some track record and technology has been uh, proven in other small islands like the Caribbean islands. Would you like to contribute a big development impact with the relatively small investment for our public uh, Pacific nations? Would you like to work for the Pacific? If your answer to this question is yes, please contact us. We have very talented, the well-balanced staff as you can see from this slide, and please feel free to contact us, bring your ideas and share your thought, ask any question you have. If you want to uh, raise some concern, please feel free to one of us, so feel free to contact one of us. And lastly, we would like to introduce our uh, flagship, the publication Pacific Energy Update. This is the annually, annual uh, publications. You can uh, find more information from the following link. And thank you for your kind attention. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Hi, I'm Justin. Hi, I'm Julia. And thank you for
for having us in this grown-up session discussing clean energy. We have a message from the young people who are still in school. My friends and I are worried of not just the future of COVID-19, but of climate change as well. But we see hope. This world has addressed this virus by enforcing lockdowns and by practicing social distancing and other life-saving measures. As we live through this difficult time, I still hope that you have climate change at the forefront of your thinking. Our future depends on the choices and actions you choose to take. Dear participants, please continue to fund clean energy projects such as solar energy and electric vehicles to ensure a cleaner environment and a safer future. This pandemic has taught us that we all have the power to change our behavior. We hope this, this will urge all of us to apply this lesson in our fight against, against climate change. our human resources department they are always very hard to catch so in case you had missed this opportunity this will be shared online please check on them and you are more than welcome to connect to any of our colleagues at the end of the session Jesslyn and Julia the two young ladies the future of our generation, as I said at the beginning, their combined age is below 30. They're still teenagers. In 2030, they will be the war. Their generation will be here. Climate change is a very serious issue. And I will ask each of our colleagues to respond to the questions that are asked to them. Conclude that question with what happening on climate change. So on our panel, uh, we have our co-host, Samia, still you are there, right? I'm here. And Emily, and we also have our colleague presenters, Pradeep Tarakan, Uyu Lee, and Mr. Farhan, we are all here, right? So we will start maybe with one question. Pradeep, I really liked your presentation and I wanted to ask you something and one audience also asked saying, okay, you are developing this solution. You said there will be an opportunity to scale up in ASEAN, but will there be a package like a franchise that somebody wants to do and go and said, okay, this is Pradeep's model. This is ADB model. How do we use? How do you respond to that, Pradeep? Thanks, Sohail. Um, no, definitely, I think uh, we are very encouraged by our results uh, in Cambodia, and we are taking this effort regional. I talked about the Asho program, which is short for Asia, ASEAN Scaling Up Renewable Energy and Storage, because we find that when you do renewables at a very large scale, it doesn't work without having storage alongside. Um, and so we are taking this to a lot of uh, home clients in the region. And it's not a one size fits all type of arrangement. What we are trying to provide our clients is a suite of options. And, and then depending on the client's circumstances, we can then tailor those solutions. So if, if they were already prepared projects and then they really only need to structure them and get them financed and we can do that. But if they are at a very early stage and we need to start with uh, you know, pre-feasibility studies and resource assessments all the way to financial flows, we can do that as well. So it is a complete package in that sense. And uh, anyone can, can come and connect with you to get more information, obviously. Yes, of course. I mean, uh, we have a brochure out and there are, there are contact information on that. I mean, we have uh, representatives from both Southeast Asia Energy Department and the Office of Public-Private Partnerships on that, um, on that brochure and, and feel free to reach out. We, we're already uh, making inroads in the region. Samia, there were 
coming back to Samia as well. I mean, there are quite a number of questions uh, on the Bangladesh project. One was on gender. Can you be a bit more specific? And I also had one question that you left with uh, the message saying, please others follow the Bangladesh model, how so many people got connected in such a short period and how uh, we are looking at all sorts of renewable energy solution. You want to make any comments? Um, yeah, so thank you, Sohail. So I'll start with the gender action plan. So we had a few questions and I think if I walk through the gender action plan that we had for our solar project, it will answer a few of the questions we've received on how ADB is um, innovating and implementing gender action in countries that we work in. So on Spectra specifically, we have action plans that we've agreed on a company and project level. And we've also um, added some action plan that engage with the community. So on the project level, um, the targets include things like 25% of the workforce that will be hired for the operations of this project will be female. Um, then on the company level, the HR policy will implement equal opportunity pay, uh, have benefits like maternity leave and flexible work hours, grievance mechanism, zero tolerance on gender-based violence, which is even more relevant now with, it, with the COVID-19 uh, situation. And then incentivizing uh, the company themselves to implement programs for women leadership within the company. So all of that will be implemented within the policy of the company. And then on the site level, very simple things like implementing facilities, like having a separate female washroom. You'll be surprised how many times you go to a site or you go to an office and you don't see separate toilets for women. And that is very simple, but it's very effective. Um, and also having like a crash where working mothers can bring their babies and park them for a few hours while they're working. Um, this could be just a cleaning lady who comes and cleans the solar panels. And having that changes the uh, mentality of the community. It makes it acceptable for women to go to work. And that has knock-on effects, which are very positive, and it changes the mentality. Um, there's also going to be a focal person, a gender focal person that will be hired um, under this project who will uh, maintain uh, these targets that have been agreed with ADB. And then furthermore, on the community level, um, the company has agreed that they will have very meaningful public consultations with the community around the project site, where they will ensure that at least 40% participation is from women. And then um, they will also have, um, they will basically talk about preventing gender-based violence and 100% of the employees will be sensitized and trained on sensitive things like this. So all of these action plans have been curated in a way that it's very implementable and has a high impact, even though they are simple. So I hope that answers some of the questions that were asked about the gender. And on the future of renewable energy, Sohail, to, to answer your question on Bangladesh's um, potential in renewable energy. Um, we are seeing a lot of traction now. Uh, it took some time for the solar initiative to take off from a grid connected perspective, but now there's a lot of interest. Now that there, there's uh, news in the market that ADB has financed a solar project in the private sector, um, the proposals are flooding in and other investors are now feeling more comfortable investing in the solar environment. Um, and furthermore, our South Asia colleagues are working on feasibility studies. There's going to be, I, I, would, I would be um, pretty sure that there's going to be a high potential in wind energy. Um, and there's also going to be floating solar coming up. And rooftop solar is going to continue to be a very, very feasible solution for off-grid. Thank you, Samia, because uh, you mentioned a few of the technology because there was also one question about 
what technologies are ADB using newer technologies? And obviously solar projects starting from large solar park, Pradeep mentioned about this uh, large solar project, uh, rooftop solar, you mentioned floating solar. I think on electric vehicles, uh, Yuli mentioned uh, about electric vehicles. I think we are also doing a battery uh, on-grid battery pilot in Pakistan. We are also looking at a large number of uh, demand-side energy efficiency sort of project. Before we go into that, I will ask uh, both uh, uh, Yuli about uh, the batteries and high technology in your project, especially the bit I like that you said this helping us to reduce cost of generation as we move out of uh, diesel genset. Then I will also ask Emily. Emily used to uh, work for the International Renewable Energy Association so agency. So she also brings a perspective of what's happening at the global level. So I'll start with Uli, you, if you want to take a question on what high technology projects, uh, components you have in your projects. Thank you. Thank you, Sohail. Uh, as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, starting from uh, since early 2010s, uh, most of Pacific Island announced their own renewable energy target. Uh, it gave us like uh, ADB development uh, institution a good justification to allocate our funding on this renewable energy sector. So we started with uh, low hanging fruits, uh, solar PV project. And because um, we can easily rely on more like a secondary data uh, rather than the uh, site, the data on solar fairly reliable data and then starting from there then um, we invested in finance also other development partners they finance some uh, wind project uh, for a few country uh, where they have some uh, well reliable the uh, site specific data is available and after we added the um, the few the megawatt scales renewable projects uh, to the grid and because the energy mix in the many of the Pacific Island countries are very simple, just like a 90 or 70% relies on diesel. And then very small scale, like a 15 megawatt, sometimes it's 75 megawatt in store capacity at the nationwide. So after a few megawatts of renewable projects, the, you know, the intermittent, intermittency in, impact of those renewables are very critical. And so we started to find a solution uh, for various types of the storage technologies. And, but the, let's say the country like Samoa and PNG, they have uh, plenty of hydro resource. So, so we use some of the water storage technologies, but the country like the Tonga and the Cook Island, uh, uh, not that many other types of the storage systems are available. So we focused on the battery storage system for last five years. And then, um, we are now, um, my colleagues, uh, Cindy uh, Tianko, Dr. Cindy Tianko, now we are trying to promote the floating solar in many of our uh, nations and in the ocean surface and uh, never been tested in any other places. And so now this is the brand new technology we are, we are trying to promote. And ocean technologies and some geothermal technologies we are trying to do, but the uh, cost of the uh, pre-feasibility assessments are fairly high. And also compared to, you know, the uh, very small populations, uh, mostly uh, below million uh, population. So we are trying to instead of promoting, you know, rapid and novel idea all at, at the same time, we are trying to uh, promote these new and uh, innovative technology in a phase manner gradually. So back to Emily. Yes, I think U gave a very good overview about what's happening in Pacific. Just to add a couple of uh, comments, I think uh, we are we're not only looking at the innovation in uh, technology or other things, also we're looking at the innovation in financing as well. We're trying to use our um, the public sector money. So uh, for example, GCF will provide um, grant for battery storage or uh, ADB will provide a grant or loan for uh, upgrading the grid system, and then we can accommodate a more private sector brought in solar energy. 
Okay, I mean, we heard a lot about our public sector operation. We have one colleague here from our EPP group, Farhan, if you could introduce yourself and say what's your comment on how we can better work together because public money is already always very limited, right? Yes, <clears throat> that's true. I think that the model that we tested in Cambodia and now we are um, taking to other parts of Southeast Asia is a model that really works very well where the regional department is doing some of the upstream work required to identify the capacity of the system to absorb electricity coming from renewables. And then certain components where the private sector has more limited interest are financed with sovereign loans. And then for electricity generation or other components where there is very strong private sector interest, that's something where we don't need to be providing loans as an institution. And that's exactly what we did in Cambodia. We identified the pain points for the private sector, uh, for the and those were financed by public funds and provided by the government through um, an aid below. Okay, that's good. Thank you. I don't know how much time we have got, but I want to make some comment on climate change. Anyone wants to say something, or maybe let me ask this question. I have one challenge for. U and uh, Emily, who is working in Pacific, because today, because of the COVID virus, we are counting how many people infected, which country has completely eliminated the virus, and New Zealand is on the top of the list. And I think if we use the same comparison for fossil fuel, there's only one country from ADB's operation from all the way from Afghanistan to Pacific Pacific could be the country, he said, yes, we are out of fossil fuel. So how far are we from that? We don't know, maybe it will take us a few more years, but I hope our colleagues will lead that and then we can all follow. And that's the challenge, I think, for all our audience, all the attendants today, that yes, we learned through the virus as a common enemy, we can act and hope very soon we will be able to eliminate the virus. Same should go with climate change because that's a bigger virus out there. We don't see, and that's another invisible enemy. Maybe the climate change we see a less. If I look outside, the air is clean before it was not. So with that thought, if thank you very much for everyone for attending this session and to the audience who are out there, please, we gave you a face to many ADB names please come and connect with us. We are here to work together and all those items that we discuss on innovation, on technology and on gender issues, broadly addressing climate change. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.